Hello everyone. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the session. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Okay. Fine. So, uh, yeah. So I've pasted uh, a link uh, on the chat. That is the live stream link on YouTube, right? So you can refer to it and maybe copy it for uh, uh, referring to the video later. Okay. All right. So while I'm uh, just admitting other students uh, in the in the chat, I would like to know your experience with the week one of uh, after one. Anybody can uh, uh, just unmute and start talking. Okay. By the way, my name is uh, Adarsh, and I will be your uh, uh, instructor, co-instructor for uh, active course uh, this term. Okay. So all the live sessions regarding. Uh, uh, the, the course project related will be you know, co guided by me. All right, so yeah, somebody raised hand. Uh, Manan, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Good morning. Hmm. Yeah, go ahead. So, my experience was uh, uh, it was a mix, uh, mix of uh, easy and uh, some difficult lectures as. Uh, the professor, when uh, he tries to do the coding in the in the lecture, uh, that part I was unable to get it. Otherwise, it was uh, everything fine. And uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So coding with coding, are you referring to the screencast videos? Uh, screencast also plus in the lecture also some sometimes professor is uh, trying to uh, connect to the Ubuntu uh -huh. Unix shell system. Okay. All right. So, uh, how many of you are uh, compatible with uh, Linux or Unix systems? Here? Okay. Quite a few. How many are not? Okay. So, drastic increase in numbers or not? Okay. So, it doesn't matter. Uh, the thing is, we are not really bothered about the platform here, okay? The hardware that we'll be using or the software that we are going to use, we are not really bothered about that. Okay, so the very first thing that we uh, focus on is the is the platform that we are going to work on, right? And that platform is web. Okay, so we'll be using internet for our uh, development of application, right? So internet is common to every uh, platform, right? Doesn't matter if it is Unix, if it is Windows, if it is Mac. So you don't really have to worry about those. It's just that it's just a matter of choice that somebody is using Linux or somebody is using Windows. Okay. Uh, or the live sessions that we are going to take, okay, the, the open sessions where we will be coding along throughout the session, that will be done on Windows. Okay. So we might use uh, various IDs, uh, but uh, it will be on Windows. Okay. So it will be comfortable for most of you and probably all of you it will be comfortable with. Okay. But uh, if there are any issues uh, regarding the understanding of coding part in the lectures at this point, uh, just have some patience because, uh, uh, I mean, initially that is not the agenda to, uh, you know, make you learn. So this is not a system command course or a course where we teach you to, you know, put certain commands and get the, get the thing output. Our idea is to uh, help you develop a web application. Uh, doesn't matter what the, you know, uh, this is platforms now let me go ahead with uh, or let me start with uh, the the piece of code that uh, professor nitin has used in his slides right so that is uh, basically done on uh, unix or unix shell or linux shell just to create a basic uh, web server okay that is to create a basic web server which we can do on python or on our local command prompt or PowerShell also. Okay. So it's not that uh, if you are not having any idea about what shell is, what Unix is, what is this netcat and what is this local host, you don't have to worry about it. Okay. So that was done just to create a basic uh, server uh, running on Linux system, which can be accessed with any systems, any other system. Okay. Similar to that, we will be doing in our uh, upcoming lectures to get you the idea of what basically a uh, basic server is and how it works. So I have a question. This uh, web server, 
it works with the in a lan within the house or it can go outside also you can broadcast it outside also yeah that depends so if it is uh, a local server okay which is going to be the uh, the case in most of our uh, uh, sessions if it is a local server it will be in the you know local area that is you can uh, uh, yeah let let me finish okay uh, so it it will be a local server where you which you can access within your system okay the mm -hmm. local system okay given that if you have the correct ip address you can uh, visit through your phone also okay because i tried uh, it was not my phone was not picking up hmm. but uh, another computer connected on my lan was uh, it that was working yeah so that that's what so in that case since it was already connected to the lan the ip address remains same right so you are right. the machine that was working as a server was common to all the machines connected to lan okay but if you want to connect the phone you need to know the ip address of the system on which it is running okay right now now i want to make this application available to everyone people i know people i don't know people i don't want to share my ip address with so i will have to deploy it okay that will be seen in the last part of the course okay yeah all right somebody uh, again uh, muted I just wanted to ask: uh, Is a shell just a terminal? Shell is just a terminal. Not really. See, the terminal is where you run your programs. Okay, it is a command line interface where you will be giving a command to run a particular file with inputs, without inputs, doesn't matter. But a shell is an interactive one. Okay, this is for for example, if I call a Python shell, I can very well run the Python code there. i can run it line by line and see what the output is so that is more interactive okay command line on the other hand will directly allow you to run the python program so we'll see the difference of that also all right uh, shutani yes so and is is the command line also the kernel of the operating system command line the kernel operating system yeah maybe you can call it but the thing is uh, kernel has to be connected or it has to be in the more of an admin way right it is uh, the command line that we will be using is more of a generic okay to uh, as i said to run the uh, python programs that will be creating for the sessions okay thank you okay so there is one question in uh, uh, chat uh, explain the meta meta block of html code Okay, so the week two content is released to you all, right? So you have gone through the week two content, and this is what uh, week two says. It is about more of HTML and CSS. So basically, what happens is a me meta block in HTML has nothing to do with what renders on the screen. It is more of uh, uh, things that we attach to an HTML file. Okay, so we'll see that completely in detail when we'll go with the with the solve with instructor sessions of uh, week two. So basically, the idea is you want to create an html file okay there is some text which is relevant to the users or consumers of that file some text that is uh, important to the operating system or not really not the operating system directly but the browser right the browser need to know what language this should be rendered in okay what are the other files attached to this okay what should be the title of uh, this file so all this meta information which is not related to direct information is called as meta and that's why that is added in the meta block okay so you'll see that there is something called as title uh, tag okay style tag so if you want to add any internal styling to the html page we'll be adding it through the meta tag that is the head tag of the html document okay everything that i want to see on the web browser as a rendered page that i'll be adding in a body tag explain the protocol ip address can you repeat the last few lines yeah so what i want to say, uh, say is uh, an html document is divided into two parts okay so one part is uh, when you go through the html file create your the html file of your own you will see that there are two uh, major tags in html that is the body tag and head tag hmm. okay so in the head tag you add all the information that is relevant to browser okay, okay. and in the body tag you add all the information that is uh, something that you want to render on the browser 
okay so in the head tag what what is what are now what is this information that is uh, relevant to the browser the browser need to know what is the encoding okay in general it is utf encoding okay utf encoding you will see in the content again okay of week 2 uh apart from that there so if you uh, open the browser you will see various tabs opening on the top right so every tab has some heading so probably now when you are joining in this meet you will be see meet uh slash activity practice session okay so this is the same link for open session also that's why it is uh, saying like this all right so it is saying meet hyphen uh, activity practice session so this is actually the title of this particular page okay so this title has to be added in the head tag okay so what did we see we saw the encoding the title apart from that if there is any uh, styling that i want to give so this pa page is uh, enormously styled right so if i want to add this style or uh, uh, if, if i want a particular style to apply on the html page i'll add that style in the head tag okay apart from that there are things like javascript files okay uh, in later uh, part we'll see bootstrap files getting attached all right external css files so all these files are linked to an html page and where do we link it in the head tag which is all the meta information a general consumer need not know all these things so what is relevant to a general uh, user of the page the content of body tag that is the reason we are calling it meta okay uh so so the data uh, regarding the web page we are that we are creating everything uh, from html to the html file to everything means meta data uh, data of data right what it it's called no sorry uh, can you can you come again metadata is what is called data of data i means um some extra ex extra data about the uh, no no not like uh, extra data it is important it's not anything but extra not but extra. it is not relevant to the user it is relevant to the okay. browser okay. okay okay so it's like when you are given uh, uh, probably let's say if you are taking a lecture there are certain things that you will do for your convenience and there will be the actual content that you want to deliver okay so what is the actual content is something that your students will see okay so that actual content should come in the body okay but whatever preparation that you have been doing to make them understand is the metadata which is not really relevant to them but useful to you to actually make them understand right okay sir hello yes yes are you sir i had a query in 1.9 i am not able to solve the sum of round trip Yes, sir. Same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will yeah. go through that. We, that is the so, actually, yeah. that is yeah. That is actually the agenda of today's session. We'll go through some numericals, uh, getting you to the uh, the feel of the basic terminologies of uh, performance parameters of web app, right? So we'll go through that. Okay. So I'm just trying to get your understanding of uh, week one, right? Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, just a follow-up question regarding, you know, what is contained in the head tag. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know if uh, you know, say we want to attach a PDF file, you know, which the user should access. So is that in the body or is that in the head? Head tag. Now, so you want to attach a PDF file which is accessible to the user. Is yeah, it should yes. be in the body. Okay. Everything that is accessible that should be accessible to the user of your page should be in the body because that is what is getting rendered on the browser. that is the main main body i mean main uh, content of the web page hmm. which will we are getting to the user right yeah so there i mean with that we will uh, i mean when we will go through the uh, application or the html file creation static web page creation with html and css we'll see that there are two files uh, or two basic tags one is anchor tag and one is link tag okay so what is the basic difference uh, in this two tags link tag basically attaches an extra piece of information to the html anchor tag attaches a link which you want the user to see on the web page okay you did not get it don't worry we will go through it in the more practical way yes and sir uh, this mad one is more about practical or it is more about theoretical should we make notes also or not uh, not really because uh, see uh, so there is this component of lab assignments open sessions solve with instructor sessions which is synonymous right so all these things will cover everything practical okay you you 
see some basic understanding basic theoretical understanding is required but that is what is given in the course is sufficient okay you want to read extra there is no stopping you but the thing is the practical aspect of the course which is probably the 80% of the course is something that we are going to see uh, note and have a proper uh, record of so you don't have to worry about making your own note as we go ahead the things that i code when you code along with me the notes will be with you right so does it mean uh, means uh, this whole course is more about vs code html css and backend whatever right this is more of a backend development sir whatever uh, the professor is uh, sharing in the slides and whatever he is i mean uh, explaining to us that uh, we are noting down so is that okay i mean as you yeah, said that is okay see so the the major lectures uh, of the content uh, they might sound theoretical initially but yeah so they are basically to give you some idea on what we are, what topic we are trying to understand okay to as a practical back to this there are screen cast okay so Yeah. when you when you go ahead and watch screencast and work along with the professor you will see that the notes are being made as far as the code is concerned okay the theoretical notes you can make okay the slides and all will be provided to you okay the codes that are used in the screencast will be provided to you okay they will keep on appearing or keep on getting updated on the portal front end okay along with that when we will be coding uh, so there will be these sessions open sessions every saturday that we are going to have these were this will be completely practical sessions all right same thing we'll do i'll code along you can follow me or you can just sit back and watch it carefully and then maybe later do it but the code that i'll be using or creating on the uh, i mean on the on the sessions uh, on the go will be provided to you after the session so you will be having the complete uh, uh, so notes. i think trying to say we'll have to uh, we will have the soft copy of the notes i mean whatever codes and whatever things we are going to do in live session right every code written anywhere during the you know entire course will be with you okay. so the, what does the screen cost means uh, is it a screen recording uh, no uh, so screen cast is basically a short video that give you some idea on the practicality of what you have learnt in the theory part okay, okay so sir. for example when if we start with html how does html file is to i mean how does an html file work how do we create an html file where do we render it is something that is shown in screencast so this is more of a practical again to back that uh, give more understanding on that we'll have open sessions so the screencast file in uh, ubuntu so if i have to do it on windows would you be able to show it to us how yeah yeah, yeah yeah so that's what i said right we will be yeah. the coding sessions that we are going to have every saturday 11 to 1 are completely happening on windows okay okay thanks sir okay so that will so be, be from a week to two, two week yeah. everything will happen on windows so uh, today will you uh, set up the environment vs code environment extension uh, uh, not setup. today not today in next week. okay because more of the coding part comes in the next week so not today and so we're using our own terminal or uh, vs code only anything will give you i'll i'll show you all the ways all the possible ways okay so okay yeah yeah sunita you can yeah so i was trying to ask whether the sessions would be on saturday or wednesday i mean these coding sessions uh see so uh, saturday uh, sorry wednesdays are activity practice sessions right so you will go through friday content releases right yeah. so you have friday saturday sunday monday tuesday to actually go through the content solve the questions and ask your doubts based on the content and any generic doubt that you might have all right yeah uh, throughout the course that you can ask in activity practice sessions and on saturdays we are going to have coding based session that is solve with instructor so every week content for example html is week 2 content right html and css so we'll have a coding assignment practically done live on saturday session every saturday okay okay sir thank you okay sir, so can you please summarize the week one contents in brief so uh, so as to get some idea because uh, i don't understand it quite well hmm okay so week one content in brief so see week one okay i'll i'll come to that let's let's take some basic uh, one liner questions again uh excuse uh, question, me question. uh sindhu was that you 
Oh, yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask whether, uh, like, if two HTML files are present in one location, and if we create a server, uh, uh, what, uh, which file will be opened when we uh, open it in a browser? So it depends on what is their name. Uh, we just created like uh, like uh, one liner, right? Uh, Python minus m http that is okay server. that is that is what you are doing with uh, creating a python server that is okay now when you do that when you create the server the server starts running on 8000 port okay now you want to uh, go through i mean you want to go to the browser and open 8000 port now this is where you want to see which uh, html file opens right ah uh, yes so this this that's what i'm saying this depends on what is the name of html file so sir, it will take by default uh, index.html, right? Right, that's what. So if one of your file name is index.html, it will by default render index.html. Okay. Right. And the other file has to be, uh, uh, I mean, has to be rendered by giving the uh, endpoint as the file. Okay. Now what I'm speaking, don't worry, we'll see that everything. But this is more of a week two content, right? <laughs> Any okay. doubt in week one? Uh, no, so, I, so I we will go through, go through everything in sequence, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, creating a web server, Python server, or any other server is something that comes from uh, week two, because that, that is where we are rendering more of HTML files. Okay. So uh, it, it's not that I'm saying that it is a week two content, don't ask me now. It's just that I want to create a, you know, a, a link of uh, studying the scores in a certain way. True, sir. Okay, okay, okay. okay. okay so I didn't so, see the week two course. Uh, I just saw the week one. That's, uh, that's okay. So the thing is, uh, the so that's what. So today what we are going to see is mostly, uh, so I thought of spending first half an hour to actually understand on what is uh, your position on the course, uh, week one content basically. And then we will go through the content uh, agenda of today's uh, session, which is giving you some idea of uh, network parameters all right with with the new previously uh, previously given or uh, quizzes based numericals okay so that is what we were going to see today all right now html and css is a week two content yeah the content is released you can go through it uh, uh, have a good understanding of it go to solve the question that is okay but uh, any practical doubt that is on the uh, week two content we'll see in the to the two sessions coming in the next week okay so by end of saturday session next week i'm sure that there will be no doubt on html sir can i ask Sense? a question regarding mvc model view controller yeah, yeah mvc except yeah uh, so maybe i'll just uh, tell you my understanding of mvc with an example mm -hmm. maybe you can just uh, validate it so say for example, I am loading a page in Amazon. Okay, so I go to Amazon website and I sort of click on the photo of a washing machine, say for example, that I see there. So what happens in the background is may uh, the click on that page is sort of like an input to the controller. And then uh, so when I click that, uh, the controller will know that the user has clicked on the image of the washing machine. And then the controller will sort of request to get the information that is to be loaded on the next page from the model because sort of model will know how to interact with the database and uh, then model will get that uh, data from the db and it will like the data that it will pull out will be sort of like a raw data and this raw data is not in uh, uh, say user readable form so what it will do is it will send it to the controller and the controller will send it to the view because the view will then apply the styling and it will send it back to the controller which will sort of push it to the user so is this sort of yeah right that is the uh, right way of understanding okay so in this basically uh, the workings of model view and controller is correct right mm -hmm. right okay 
so view does not only come at the end where it has to represent uh, detailed uh, data of washing machine it was there at the very first step the click that you made was also view so it starts with view and ends with view okay all right because you are you are uh, where did you see or view uh, literally the washing machine on the screen right so whatever you view on the screen is a view okay okay so a different view because you were along with washing machine there were other products also in the first view but in the second view it is more of uh, specific to washing machine all right yeah so two different views yeah so it will start with view so you uh, see so you are a client you will uh, interact with the view the view sends request to the controller the controller based on what has been asked by the view sends to the model relevant data related to the particular view will come from the model it will again uh, yeah so it will again get yeah get that uh, more interactive way or uh, format and it will again go back to the view are you saying that uh, from the model it comes back to the controller again which is getting transmitted to the view yes so a controller is like uh, the main uh, you know central person here everything that comes to or goes from has to go cross through the controller because controller basically not only understand the request it makes a request to the model takes the response processes the response so that it can be rendered by the uh, the view rendered as a view by the client right now yeah it is clear okay so basically controller is uh, taking uh, is responsible for the two sides of the operation one from the user to the model and then from the model to the user right. both yes. in both aspects a controller is involved right so when we will work on back end will we create controllers to actually accept or work with two uh, uh, flows right one towards the model and one towards the view okay can i ask one question activity question uh, aq 1.4 question number 5 mm -hmm. okay it says it, it asks where is the business logic hmm. it asks yeah. about the location of the business logic hmm. where should the business logic be included and i got it wrong i got i wrote model but here i find the answer is controller yeah yeah right and i am unable to reconcile with that okay so see uh with the explanation that we gave what we discussed two minutes back regarding uh the flow okay what do you think or who do you think is doing the major task okay uh, see basically uh it depends on the application isn't it see if i have one model mm -hmm. and uh, there's a business logic right the logic should be independent of um the whatever my application how the application runs right the logic is the business logic is basically more fundamental than the application logic i believe the controller la runs on the application logic and the business logic should be there in the model unless what is what is the difference between application logic and business logic for instance uh, see this i'm from a totally non it background from how i interpret it this is my view absolutely and it could be way wrong uh the business logic would be say for instance uh the entire gamut of uh the operations as to which the application should be made to run let me give you an example like for instance if i have a banking operation and uh, the and i'm asking and i want to as a user i want to say transfer some money 50 rupees right so the controller is taking my instruction of uh, debiting 50 rupees to the database or where the uh you know the entire business logic lies in the model this is where i how i understood and where the controller um task is getting validated the application logic gets validated by the business logic in the model because it's a very simple form but that's how i understood unless it's a different uh, you know it has got a lot of models incorporated where it would be probably best to put the business logic in the controller so that's why i'm saying it depends on but at our level i don't think we are working with multiple models here so i am really kind of confused i kind of like um, if you, are you getting me we actually will be working on multiple models can you have one table for the entire application no no 
see again that's what i'm coming from like uh, the business logic a logic can have a business logic can have incorporate multiple tables or things like that isn't it hmm. so i mean looking no, at the so larger see, the thing is as far as see the thing is as far as mvc is concerned or any application that we talk about logic generally means brain right so something that is happening that uh actually you know it's it's like taking decisions so if you are taking decision what to do what not to do next right so that is coming from the controller the model uh on one hand is actually just holding uh the data okay in in whatever form it is it is just holding the data it does not know what data to fetch what data to give what to do it it can do the basic operations the basic crud operations that we'll be seeing later it can do that but uh, when to do what how to do what and at what time what should be the frequency that is something is coming from the controller okay and so sure. once it is coming from the controller this is where we can say that a particular task which is more relevant to the business has happened okay so, so sir you want to say a uh, model is yeah. just only trying to store the data and archive the data and uh, do data related operations and the whatever the business business uh, logic means the uh, other logic has to be applied that is coming from the control it means how to use the data and uh, what data to be sent to the user right yeah, so see control. what i see uh, uh, the model can perform all the crud operations so with the crud operations i mean create read update and delete yes okay. this is the probably the more uh, four fundamental operations that can happen on the database all right so if this this can be done by model itself but how to do matlab uh, what i want to say is when to do it what to do when whether i want to do a crud of a, a, a create operation or a read operation a delete operation or an which op operation to do first or which so what should be the order of that operation order here yeah. uh, this information is actually coming from the control so that is something related to controller uh, that will decide how to process the data or means how to play with the data and right. manipulate so it. what i can what i'm saying is uh, uh, it's like uh, a general machine also right a particular part of a machine can do it but it will only be the controller or the processor of that machine will tell it what to do it and when to do it right so the model along with uh, the storage uh, and archive capabilities can do these performance uh, do this uh, operations but uh, the 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 chronology the order the sequence and the frequency and the number and the time of doing that will be all given by the controller okay right so, uh, yeah so yes. but uh, say for example in the uh, like example given by anirban where you know we are doing a banking transaction mm -hmm. so that time uh, say for example we are we want to debit 50 rupees from the bank account right so uh, if the model might you know can also check if you know a sufficient balance is there before it can you know sort of debit that amount or the real requested so don't you think that because that model is dealing with the database if we put that logic that is a business logic right it has to check if the balance is there or not so this if it is put in the model then it will be easy sort of to you know check all these things with the database because it is interacting with the database mm -hmm. so if we keep that there won't it be more sort of efficient ha ah, see the thing is i am not saying that you cannot do that it's just okay. the in mvc uh, what we mean to do is we keep the business logic in control now with the same example uh, there are limitations also right so what let me tell you what i meant so when you are saying that a model when uh, you want to debit something it will check for whether there is sufficient funds or not which model can do that a model that is really very uh, uh, good at doing things not only having the basic operations but can uh, do some validations also which are uh, not uh, done by controllers or the controller need not do them and it does that by itself right yes so in that case i can say okay keep the business logic with the model because it is actually uh, giving my uh, application uh, more efficiency all right 
but uh, if it if we talk about the tech stack that we are using or mostly databases use they are capable of uh, general basic operations right now when you talk about uh, now when we are talking about this uh, debit thing okay whether to check this balance is there which i want to debit or not is again done by controller that validation is again done by controller so if i want to withdraw it will throw me the error it cannot uh, uh, do that okay the model is not proficient enough to do that validation by itself without actually getting uh, 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 what we call without breaking his operation okay so right. if, yeah if i have to you know sort of uh, think of it from a coding perspective so basically it is uh, whatever piece of code we write in the controller section that is uh, that will make it smarter so if i write the same piece of code say in the model section mm -hmm. uh, it will make the model smarter is it how it works yeah know. but then yeah that is that is right but yeah then uh, then where does separation of concern go right there is some piece of code that actually does things with uh, model there is some piece of code that they, does things with the view and then there is some piece of code that actually runs the application so you have the you know complete code scattered throughout the application correct right so that is not what we want and this is completely opposite to what we are doing with mvc right so we are I, making three components just to make sure that we have three separation of concerns view and the templates are there with view database related operations are there with database and all the logic that is happening with the application will stay with controller okay right so i think this was uh, also uh, hi this is vasu uh, i think this was covered in database dbms i was trying to pull out those slides like i can't i can't recall where they are mm -hmm. but essentially what i recall is uh, in the model like i don't like i don't think of it as a model model and the name model it's basically where the database resides and you uh, you know, there's a lot of database operations which happen, which are also quite complex, right? So basically, the model does all that, pulls out the data, you know, serves the data back, and then everything to do with uh, the business logic is, uh, you know, there are these uh, layers also with presentation layer. It's also taught in data. Uh, so controller is basically a, because there's a lot of complicated, uh, you know, uh, logic which needs to be applied, and that sits. Uh, with the controller is what I recall. I just think of model as a database. Hmm. Right. So that's what I'm saying. So when we study database scores, our uh, DBMS scores for that matter, uh, our concern is database. All right. So I want to add everything that is possible to not only do the fundamental uh, CRUD operations, but also everything to validate them. Right. So in that, I can see that major code that is uh, doing some high level task also reside in the model. And that is what we are calling a model in DBMS. But in app dev, I have the privilege to create, uh, I mean, have the privilege to create all the logic and keep it in one place. So let me keep the model very basic, right? Okay. So, so, so can we see that our controller also makes a decision that which model to evoke? Right. Like, uh, do we have to uh, use the database uh, that we have in our server or mm -hmm. Uh, do we have to use a Python code that we have in a server? So, right. so everything, everything, yeah. Okay. That will be done. And that will be, will be seen when we will be creating the backend, right? Okay. Yes, yeah. sir. sir, when are you starting with the round trip sums? <laughs> Just give me a minute. When, when we are done with, uh, okay, so I'm, I guess we are done with uh, the queries by raising hands, right? Uh, just last question. Can you tell uh, more about few? Uh, I mean, apart from seeing what we what we usually see in the screen, that mm. is not view, right? Uh, there's something more to the view. Yeah. So that and what is happening at the uh, at the background of the screen. I'm not talking about the about the backend, but the background of the screen. Okay. Interactivity. That is again a part of view. For example, you have a form where you put in your name and password. So you can interact with the view, not only see that, okay, this is the name and this is the blank space where I'll put my name, but to be able to put your name actually is also a part of view. Okay. Right? Now, when what happens to that name when I click on submit? Before it goes to the server, where does it get stored? That is also a part of view. Okay. okay. Apart from that, if there is a password and password has a condition of minimum eight characters, what will happen if I put seven characters and uh, click on submit? 
will it actually go to the server or will no. it stay there and tell me okay this is something wrong will throw error yeah no yeah that throws error but no. where, where exactly this error is coming from is it coming from the server or is it there or something is there at the background of the uh, uh, the html file itself that tells me that okay there is an error you can have it from both right. sides sir yeah yeah that you is you can have it from the uh, definitely the, definitely if we are if this is happening from front end then we can say that this is also part of view Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, sir, <laughs> sir, sir, sir uh, that's the question I had even in DBA base. So some of these things, like for example, you put in a wrong name or whatever, it doesn't comply to certain logic. Then mm -hmm. the fronted, whatever, the JavaScript itself tells us that there is an error, right? So some business logic also sits in the view. Is that a correct way to think about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can say that. Okay. So what we are what we are seeing that, no, currently in app dev one will not talk about that because we're talking about backend development. Okay. Yeah, sure. So the validation that will happen will happen at the server side. But okay. is that not the case that some validations happen on the client side itself? I think so. That's what I thought. Definitely. So if that happened, that is called as front end validation, which we will okay. be uh, having a look uh, uh, in this course also and uh, definitely in Matt. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. that is again a part of you. Uh, okay. So not only really seeing. Uh, uh, interaction, uh, interaction, uh, viewing, the front end validations, front end logic are all part of view. Voice also is a part of view means whatever we yeah. speak. Right. So it's so by the term view we cannot go literally view. Okay. For example, we are yeah. talking. We are we are uh, uh, talking to Alexa. Alexa, please switch on the light. Okay. Mm -hmm. The the input that went went in the form of voice. Voice, yeah. Okay, so is the awesome. what is the view for me? The ability of Alexa to listen to my voice is the view. Right? Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. The output that it gave is also that the view. View, okay. Mm -hmm. right. I'm so sorry to interrupt. So, what is a front end logic mean? Uh, the front end logic means the logic that runs on the browser. See, so are you talking about the JavaScript part? Right, right, right. So JavaScript is basically a medium of doing a creating a front end logic. Okay, but uh, the logic, just the general understanding, the abstraction of that is there is a that there is a logic that can be uh, written at the server side and server does the thing for us, as we are saying in MVC, right? So there is a controller who does the job, who takes all the decision, but let us distribute that uh, uh, some of the task or let us uh, take some of the task from the hands of controller and do it here itself so that there is no load on controller. Okay, so with here itself, I mean at the client side only and that is done with the help of JavaScript. Okay. 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 So, sir, uh, if we have to sort, sorry, if you have to break down the, the validation part again, so basically in the view, uh, the uh, piece of code which says you have like not adhered to the minimum requirement that will be there in the view but it will be sent to the controller to check actually whether you know the user has typed in the yeah. thing right yeah if it is a backend validation okay 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 so we'll come to validation so see there is a sequence in which we can move and then come to things okay uh, sir can you conclude mvc in layman terms mm, yeah true Huh. So it's but like uh, the way, uh, step by step. yeah, it's, it's like, it's very similar to the way in, in, in the way Kaushik has said, right? So there is at the, at the beginning, you'll start off with the view because this is where you actually give command to the application to do something. Okay. So you interact. So it is first view. Okay. The client. So now this client can be the, can be referred to the browser also because this, it is the browser that sends the request. And the general user also like me and you who is sitting in front of the computer and actually interact. All right. So let us consider client to be us humans. All right. So if I click on any part of the screen that actually responds is a view, right? So it starts with view. Okay. So when I click that click will be interpreted as a request and will go to the server. Okay. Now, how does it go to the correct server? We have everything for that, right? Because uh, we have every detail of that in the URL. Okay, we'll talk about URL in quite detail. Now that, 
now let us assume that request has come to the server okay now it with server where it comes it comes to the controller okay the controller understands the request triggers a relevant uh, uh, function of what to do when this request comes all right if it is a database related operation then this uh, next request will be uh, forwarded to the model with a request of uh, relevant data to be retrieved from the model that data comes back to the controller all right now that data that is coming back to the controller is not in a format that can be that can be read but cannot be easily interpreted by the user us all right so what controller has to do it has to render this data or create of uh, information that is called as a response in a way that when browser renders it it becomes meaningful to the user all right so the response is sent by the controller that is server to the client okay who is client here us users but actually that request is coming to the browser which is actually understanding the request right now how does it understand with those two parts of html file which i said right there is head tag and there is body tag it understands on what it, it reads the meta information and renders the body information okay whatever it renders on the screen is actually the view again okay which i see so initially i used view to interact later i'm using view to see great and all these processes doing is happening in the back end of the browser at this point at the back end okay so one last question from debashish then we'll move to one or one or two questions in the chat and then we'll move to the content uh, hello sir yes yes debashish so what is cgi cgi is common gateway interface yes sir okay so so basically what you want to know about cgi that is so the thing is so, so the thing is cgi is basically allowing your application to work on web see because web is there it is hosting multiple applications right how does it understand that there is a request coming up to me right so that gateway or that interface where your application interacts with the web or the server that is sitting on the web web that interaction is done by cgi gateway interface so it is like a application or it is a concept like it is a concept it is not an application it is a concept just like tcp ip it is a network protocol right which every web application follows every every application running on that pipeline follows right so similarly uh, see we what we are doing we are creating application but for that application to actually run on the server and us to be able to interact with the application or the server we need to have that gateway right for example internet we need internet to connect right so within the internet there can be multiple thing that we might be consuming but to be able to actually consume the right data from right server we need that gateway interface right so that is cgi okay uh, sir can i ask this like uh, uh, http uses the port 80 or ftp port 20 so does it mean that the common gateway interface for http is 80 so would that be correct to say or is that wrong uh, not correctly uh, i mean not uh, entirely see the gateway and uh, everything that happens is actually taken care of by the uh, the end, uh, sorry the protocol itself okay but using a port is actually connecting to one of the functions of what the server provides right see there is one statement states that i want to connect to the server okay cgi helps me in doing that very correct statement no issues but can there be multiple functions that a server do is that a possibility yes definitely if there are multiple functions that a server do how do i connect with particular function that i want to connect to sir what, what is it that the cgi does exactly it does not connect it to the particular port so what does it do exactly can you give an example i'm trying to like wrap my head around it please hmm okay so basically you consider cgi to be a gateway that connects your application to the server it's not internet internet is actually forming the network uh, it's like a power to do it but how do we connect a particular application running on a machine to a server that is running some on some other machine so that interface 
is actually done by CGI. All right. Now, within once the connection is made, I am connected to the server. I want to connect to a particular task that a server does. So there, this is where the port comes in. Okay. For example, I create an application on my machine, which is basically running on local host 8000, let's say. Okay. Now, what is this local host? What is this 8000? We'll see. But let's say it is running on 8000. Okay. That is one that that is one application that I created and run. I want to create another application that is running on my machine, but then there will be uh, uh, confusion, right? Where where uh, if single machine is trying to run two different application, how do you differentiate? This is where port comes in. Port number is different for. Right? So the yeah, so the port number will be different for two different application running on same machine. Mm -hmm. Okay, both the applications are connected by CGI, but how are they differentiated with the help of port? It's also to connect to the which port that is done by CGI. I mean, which port we have to connect it to? General for... connects to the server. No, we okay. will connect. We will provide the port right to which okay. port I want to connect. As a client, we will provide the port. Okay, we will. Okay. So when you say it is running on port eighty, what does that mean? You are connected, you are connecting to a server that with the help of CGI and there is an application which you want to see is actually running on port 80. So what do we do? We go to HTTP localhost colon 8000 so that I can connect to a particular application. So that port we are providing as a client. Yeah, yeah we provide everything we request. No, but nothing is given uh, just as a gift. So we request everything. So what does that everything mean? I want to connect with this protocol. I want to connect to this domain name. I want to connect with this port and I want to hit this particular endpoint. Okay. So these are the four things. Apart from that, I want to provide this as a data as my parameter. Now my data should go with URL. I provide this data should go with as a should go as a request body. I provide everything is provided by the client. Mm -hmm. I mean, by server, uh, by itself doesn't know what to give to the client, right? It will only respond with whatever has been asked for. Okay. Okay. Uh, all the things what I said will make sense when we go ahead and see things. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. So yes. uh, we'll stop here for that uh, with sure. the query and question session at this point. Okay. Uh, we'll take more questions uh, later if we have time, but. Uh, we will go with uh, today's uh, uh, agenda. I want to take three or four numericals, which might help you in solving questions. Okay. True, sir. Uh, so one question, what happens to two HTML? Okay. So this has been asked for, right? And uh, explain RTT, we'll see. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll share my screen. So you can take the last activity questions that are Last activity question. As in? Activity question 1.9. Uh, there are problem sums there discussed. Uh -huh. Okay. No, no, I have uh, segregated out some questions which uh, okay. I would think uh, will, you know, once understood, you can uh, just build upon and can make any question. Okay. So can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, sir. So the, the font and everything, the question, and everything is visible, right? Yeah. Yeah. So first what I'll do is I'll create basis with these two questions. Okay. Question number one and question number two and question number three onwards will go to uh, the actual concept that are uh, asked in the quiz. Right. So just start with reading out the question. Uh, the first question is, and probably you may have seen very similar questions to already uh, in already present live sessions in the in the channel if you have the access but uh, if even if you don't don't worry all the sessions that we will see today will be available in the, uh, the what we call the playlist of youtube mad one channel right all right so we'll start off with this question very simple question but this is what uh, is required to understand latency rdt and everything all right, so there is a client machine that is A and it is communicating with data center B. So it is communicating with data center B, meaning there is a server that is actually also having a data part of it. All right, so there is a server. So basically, we'll talk about a client and the server, two different machines trying to communicate with each other and they're connected by uh, what we'll see. 
Okay, so it is located 8,000 kilometers away from C. So basically, this is not C. This is B. It A. A. Okay. okay. So what I'm saying here is, uh, we have two machines here. One is the client machine who is actually trying to connect to the server B. All right, and the distance between the two is 8,000 kilometers. Now we want to see how long will it take for a response sent by the server to reach the client. Table. All right, so I'll just uh, draw two circles. This is one circle. Pardon me if I'm, you know, making some. Uh, don't have access to the pen right now, so I'll just use this. All right, so here we are uh, trying to connect two machines. One is the A machine A, and the other is machine B. Okay, the distance between two these two is eight thousand kilometers. All right, and we want to find out the time taken by the response to send by the server. All right. So basically, if I want to time, I have the speed and I have the distance. What do we use? Use uh, one simple formula that is distance equals to speed into time. That is what we are going to use here also. All right. Now you uh, uh, focus on this part of the statement. What does it say? Assume speed of light in cable is 2E8. So what does this mean basically? So 2E8 is 10 to the power of 8. Yeah, it is 2 into 10 to the power 8. Okay, so don't uh, uh, get confused by this and this. Okay, so E does not mean exponential. E is simply to say that I am raising, a uh, raising uh, 10 to the power 8 and multiplying it by 2. This is what it means, right? So I will just keep this thing here itself. I will keep it here. Alright, so... This is speed of light on cable. This means we have to assume that the data is being transferred and fetched by the cable, on the cable, right? So there is the, the client machine A and the server machine B are connected via cable, okay? So the speed of transfer will be 2 into 10 raised to power 8. If there was nothing in between, right? The question doesn't mention if there is anything. The medium is not mentioned. If the speed is mentioned, we have to use that speed, okay? But I'm just telling you the relevance of uh, or the uh, interpretation of what speed means, right? So if it is cable, the speed will be 2 into 10 raised to power 8. And what does that mean? The connection happening between A and B is with or via cable. All right. If nothing is given, if nothing is given or something like this is given, aerial connection, then we'll see that there is nothing in between, but uh, communication is happening with air. In that case, the speed of light will be 3 into 10 raised to power 8, right? That will also be mentioned if the question comes. All right. So that is the thing. Here we are seeing uh, that the speed of light in cable is asked to assume. This means we have to assume that the uh, the communication is happening happening via cable. All right. And therefore, we'll consider speed to be two into ten to the power eight. Okay. Any issues here? Not yet, sir. Okay. Now one thing is. Okay. Thanks. All right. Now what will be the distance? What should I take a distance? Eight thousand. Right. You will have to convert it into meter. That is okay. But the distance should be 8,000. 8,000, yeah. Okay, so there is a problem here. So the problem is, I'm seeing how long will it take for the response sent by the server to reach client A. When will the response be generated? Or how will the server at B know that I have to generate a response? So for the request this? has been made. The request has to be made. All right. This means first the request will start from traveling from A, go to B, response will be generated, and then it will go back to A. So the distance but, uh, total. Uh, sir, uh, just just a point. This could be a little confusing, right? I mean, it doesn't mention whether the request has been sent or request will be sent. But suppose mm -hmm. if I assume that the request has already been sent, and then I'm asking about the response coming out. No, no, no. The thing is. When no, I'm no. saying the response is to be sent, I am, have to assume that first request has to be made. Right? Okay. It's, we cannot assume that. Okay. Fine. So it's not a given. So I have to take it as 16. Hello, sir. Hmm. So see, whenever. so, Sir, here it is saying that how long will it take huh. for a response sent by a server to reach client? Eh, na? So hmm. it is only talking about the response, means what will be the time taken? But to get the response, first you send need to send the request, no? 
then only response will come see see okay fine fine okay. but all right it is talking about the response only it is not right, talking right. about uh, means the whole time that when you have started that is also not that is okay yeah 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 i get your point see if you that is okay you are going literally i understand and it also makes sense but the thing is when you are sitting here as a client okay can you get the response directly uh, no no i know that no. i do not uh, means it when we have not initiated any request then uh, till not till not that we will not get any response uh, yeah but uh, actually that is little bit confusing because okay okay it, fine all right fine so okay assume for this question we will take that the response uh, request is made and then the re response is sent okay? okay okay see the idea is to get that how to solve these type of questions right but uh, yeah so if this is confusing we'll add okay a request is being made and then how long will it take for the response all right so makes sense right don't worry the questions in quizzes will not be tricky okay it, they are not based on assumptions if there, is, if there is a particular assumption to be made, that assumption has to be given here. Okay, so don't have to worry. Here we are taking just for the sake of understanding. Okay, so if, if, if it creates a confusion between uh, these, okay, response, request, okay, don't worry. The question in quizzes will be very straightforward. You won't only lose any marks just for the, you know, for some ambiguity in the question. Um, sir, can I say something? In DBMS, we had a concept called latency. So mm -hmm. like that, factored in everything like response time to go, uh, for the head to go from mm -hmm. here there and all the things so uh, can we just replace these words the wordings mm -hmm. out here in simple terms like that right 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 yeah so that's what i was going to come to so once what i say is how long will it take so what does this mean the time taken from this point to this point and back from this point to this point so this time is actually called as round trip time so you can see that there is a round trip being made all right so that's why, uh, so with, let us, uh, what I was trying to do is first create the concept, then give the names. All right. So here we are talking about the response to come back to uh, the client machine A. That will happen when the request is sent to the server. So first request is sent from A to B, then it will come back to B to A. And you can see that there is a circular movement of uh, request and response cycle. We also call this request response cycle. All right. So that is why it is called as RTT. So I'll just write it here. Okay, vendors. Sorry for the disturbance. All right. So I'll just write here RTT, which means round trip time. Okay. And the round trip time, the distance, which will be doubled. Okay, so this is 8,000 kilometers. I want to convert it into meters. Why? Because it makes the calculation easy because I have speed of light in meters. All right, so I'll multiply it by 1000. Okay, and everything to be divided by the speed of light, right? The speed of light, and why do we say speed of light? Because information travels in electromagnetic waves, electromagnetic waves travel with the speed of light. All right, so directly. So, assuming speed of light, meaning assuming speed of information that is being carried, the request, response, everything that is being carried is traveling with the speed of this, right? So, I'll just uh, do a division of 2 into. 10 raised to the power 8. Okay. So whatever we get is actually the time taken by the response to reach to the client. Okay. Uh, has anybody solved this? Uh, it's roughly around 0.08. 0 0.08. 0 right. Oh, sorry. 0 0.08, is it? Yes, yes. So yeah. the answer will come in seconds. Okay, this will be 0 0.08 seconds, which you can safely say as 80 Eight. milliseconds. Sir, how 80? Because uh, one second is 1000 milliseconds. Thousand. Okay. Okay. So 10 to the power one, 3. Yeah, so one second is 1000 milliseconds. Okay. So with that, if I go, I'll uh, provide uh, 80 milliseconds. And generally, this is the case, right? So you cannot, I mean, you will not generally say 0 0.8 second or 0 0.08 second. Rather, say it's something that sounds good. That's why generally the speed of the network, the time is generally specified in milliseconds. Why? Because the time taken is generally of the order of millisecond. It is very small. So it's better not to, you know, give the answer in terms of seconds, but in terms of milliseconds. Millisecond, microsecond will do. 
okay so this is round trip time okay now there is latency what is latency latency is for example i sent a request from here to here okay this and since this is a machine it will also have some time right some delay at this point to generate the response understand what the request is get the data and make the request and send so there is a delay here right so that delay along with this round trip time everything together is called as latency okay so i'll just write here once again so what is latency so therefore there is a slight differences in our case we will assume that there is no delay right because the system is ideal okay so we'll start off with very basic things and try to create uh, complicated and practical things right so latency is basically rtp and all the things okay so if there is no delay at the server end then we will uh, say we can safely say that latency is rtp so in this case latency is 80 milliseconds right so basically if i make if if i am a machine a i click on a, a, a button that button click will actually create a request from my end go to the server fetch everything that is required instantly because i'm saying there is no deep delay will come back to me in all together 80 milliseconds okay so this is how we do questions on rtt any any issue in this question so delays can be uh, at the end of the server right i mean the data center yeah sir delays can be anywhere anywhere no it can be anywhere for example if if i have a router here in between somewhere and it is actually uh, distributing the data to multiple clients there can be delay so everywhere there will be a delay that will be mentioned if no delay is mentioned assume that there is no delay. sir sir uh, what is throughput what is throughput throughput sorry i didn't get uh, throughput oh throughput 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 is number of bits written per second okay written or read number of bits written or read both yeah so number of bits either written or read per second that is throughput that is more relevant to disk size right so if i say i have a so you I may, probably in your memory card you will see right 128 mbps what is that mm. per second you can write 128 megabytes that is throughput okay 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 so reading writing speed is called as throughput sir so can you explain this first step or oh, why did you multiply 8000 into 1000 because the distance that is given to me is in uh, 8000 kilometers right and the speed is in meters yes. so i want to create okay, okay. Uh, uh, i want to convert uh, everything in one unit right Unit okay. on dimensions have to be uh, maintained anywhere. In and it. why into two? So two times, yeah. right? Yeah, because see the distance yeah. between these two points is eight thousand, but the request is first traveling from this point to this point and back from this point to this point. So what is the total distance traveled? Two into eight thousand. Okay, sir. Okay, and this is the speed. So simply divided by that. Sir, so these type of questions will be asked in quiz one. definitely so basically this is what we are okay the question that is asked in quiz is question number 3 we'll come to that speed into so this is what we are using okay let's we let shall we move sir, to the next question uh, so uh, just something on this question itself uh -huh. that i asked right yeah 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 go ahead so so if uh, see a national stock exchange has a server at the some data center mm. and i am in mumbai mm. okay and uh, there is another person sitting in delhi mm. so the person in mumbai where the data center of the national stock exchange is there mm. will get the price update some milliseconds before the person sitting in delhi is that correct definitely possible yes okay Hmm, definitely possible okay right sorry i didn't get this because so what i'm saying is uh, so what the question is suppose this is client right this is server if i try to draw a circle here okay and this is another client okay now this uh, response is going to both the client who will receive it first 
the top one top one right that was the question so basically there is a person in delhi there is a person in mumbai and there is this is this bombay stock exchange it has released price aerially it will go to everyone who will get it first this one no all right those who are close to the server i mean okay. uh, data center that will yeah yeah and this is very ideal and very generic and very simple case all right there are multiple things involved there are routers there are uh, connections everywhere right breakpoints uh, changes of mediums so that is the thing because see what if i say like this all right i say that these two are connected aerially and these two are connected via cable now who do you think will get cable one cable one will get it earlier aerial uh, okay aerial one Aerial. Okay. We have to yeah. calculate and see. I have not mentioned the distance, right? So we have to first calculate, have to calculate whichever yeah. is lesser will get. But yeah, the chances of getting this one getting uh, early is more because aerially yeah. the speed has increased tremendously, right? One point five five times it has increased three into ten raised to power. So okay. it depends on multiple factors. Okay. okay. Let us move to next question. Uh, so I was is, right. I have a doubt. Yeah, I have a doubt. So I was just like in the previous question, you said like uh, 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 we need one round trip, right, to do. The, uh, so I was thinking like, what if we are using a TCP protocol, and in TCP pro protocol we need a three-way handshake, right? So do we have to like also include it if we are doing the TCP protocol? If so, if that is there, then we'll have to provide everything data related to that also, right? Okay. Right. In that, uh, so that's what. So if there are multiple things involved. what i can do is i can either give the details of those things where the essence of question will go it will only become mathematics question or what i can do is just add a simple block here and say okay there is a delay of 10 milliseconds okay right so i'll just abstract everything and give it a simple block in between somewhere where i say that okay after everything that you do add a delay of 10 second and get the final time clear right yeah Okay, now I'll go move to next question, which is very similar, uh, and but one step uh, beyond what we have learned, right? So suppose the client, I'll just read it, read it, right? So suppose the client C is communicating with data center D located at fifteen thousand kilometers. So the distance has increased here. Concept has not changed. Assume that the TCP connection has been established and is kept alive. If each new request can be sent only after receiving an acknowledgement from D for the previous request. and what is the maximum number of requests that can be sent from c to d in one second okay let me uh, first explain the question what is happening here so till this point it remains same okay one client c another client d uh, sorry another server or data center d all right so a client c is communicating with data center d so what what do we what what actually happens is in the stateless protocol coming after last 45 minutes so what is the what is the what is the tcp ip protocol it is it it, it stands Stateless. on statelessness right so what what does that mean if the connection is established or the connection will only establish for one request okay see connection to internet is different thing connection to that server is different all right so connect i'm talking about connection to the server to a particular server so if i make a request it goes to the server and the response come back to the client okay and the connection is lost that is called as statelessness because and why do we call it statelessness because once the response is received neither the server knows who the client was nor the client knows who the server is it is again if i want to get back to the another request i'll have to make the uh, request with the help of url so new request will be created sorry new connection will be established request will be made and response will be made. okay that is what that 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 what generally happens but what does it say assuming that the tcp connection has has been established and is kept alive this means i create a request it goes to the server the response comes back to the request and again i have a, a provision to make a request without actually establishing the connection once again okay so some time goes in that also So basically, I can keep the both the server and the client connected and start making requests one after the other. All right. Now, what is the condition here? 
the the new request if i make a re first request the second request can be made only after receiving the response of first request okay that is what it says right if each new request can be sent only after receiving an acknowledgement from d for the previous request then what is the maximum number of requests that can be sent from c to d minus all right so basically the first part of this question is asking me to take out a round trip time that is how i know how much time it takes for one request or one response request response, response cycle to happen right and then later on i'll calculate how many such request response cycles are happening in one second that is what this question is asking me again assume speed of light in cable is 2e8 so what does this mean 2 into 10 to the power okay so just let me write the equation probably this is clear let's see okay so basically i want to first calculate round trip time okay, so what will be round trip time what will be the equation here i'll first write 2 because i want to multiply the distance by 2 so that is 2 into 15000 into 1000 because it's in kilometers then i'll divide it by 2 into 10 raised to power 8 okay So what is the answer here? One point five milliseconds. One point five milliseconds. One point five milli. One point five. One point five milliseconds. So you can see that even if the distance is thirty thousand kilometers, it will take only one point five milliseconds. Okay. So this is one point five milliseconds. It's one fifty millisecond, not one point five. Is it? Point one five is the seconds. Point one five second, right? So it will be one oh. fifty milliseconds. Yeah. Yeah, it is one fifty years. Okay, so just calculate, no? So this is the, okay. I'll just uh, leave this fifteen thousand as it is, and I'll cut this two and two from here. All right. How many zeros here? How many zeros here? Six. Six and two. Uh, six and eight. So okay. it will be fifteen divided by hundred, which will be point one five. So it will 0. be one fifty milliseconds. Hmm. So one fifty milliseconds, right? For the complete uh, request. to go from c to d and the response from to come from d to c assuming that there is no delay okay if a request response cycle takes 150 milliseconds how many of such are happening per second so i'll just take the reciprocal of it 1 by 150 or 1000 by 150 what did i do here <laughs> So what do I want? What do I want to do? I want to find number. Okay. Number of request. Number of request happening per second. So in one second, that is in thousand milliseconds, how many are getting? How many we are getting? Of one fifty milliseconds. That's what I get. Around six. Okay. Six point six seven. Six point six seven. Which is equals to six point six seven. Okay. So that is six point six seven, which cannot be the answer because number cannot be fraction, right? So what do I take? Do I take six or seven? Seven. Okay. How many says six? Seven. Six. Six. Okay. So we'll take six. Okay. Let's. Any explanation? Okay. I'll I'll uh, tell you why six and why not seven. because let's say 150 for one right so first if i I'll just go ahead and write for first it will take 150 okay for second it will take 150 for third it will take 150 or fourth it will take 150 or fifth it will take again 150 for sixth it will take 150 what is the total here 900 900 900 okay when i try to do the seventh one My request will go, but I won't be able to take response within that one second, right? Because as soon as I add one fifty, it will become thousand fifty. That is more than a second. So, sir, the thousand millisecond. Yeah. But in that much time, we have to calculate how many requests are made. Yeah, requests are made. No, 
See, the thing is, I want to I want to find out how many such requests are made in thousand millisecond. Let's say I ask you to make a request of which you don't get a response. Will you say a request is made successful? No. No. So you cannot consider the last one. Okay. Right. So again, right. So what, again, you if you see, assuming that the TCP connection is established and has been kept alive, and it is let's say kept alive for that one second. Okay. Yeah. So it will make nine success. Sorry, not nine. Six successful requests and response are done. But when it makes the the last one, the seventh one, the the uh, the connection is gone. Yeah. Okay. Right. So even if the response, okay. So if I Try to divide it by two. I'll get the the request will reach the this thing server, okay? Because it will take another seventy five milliseconds, right? Yeah. So it will reach the server, but while returning, the connection is lost. So the response will never reach the client. Okay. So we cannot so consider a... the last one to be the successful request. Okay. So I have Next a question. question. Uh, okay. So if we had changed the the wording of the question to assume that the TCP connection has been established and is kept alive, right? Let's say it wasn't kept alive. Then would this change in some way? Yeah, it will. It will change and will reduce from six because let's say then I have to provide how much time is required to again set up a new connection. But that information is not given here. That's what. Okay. That's what I'm saying, right? So if I remove this. Uh, this TCP connection thing is removed. I'll have to remove this or replace this statement with assume that two milliseconds are required to establish a new TCP connection with the same server. Okay, so you have to keep adding that for every request. Yeah, that's right. Two milliseconds. So, so adding, adding two milliseconds will definitely reduce the six to less than that. Five. So that would be like one fifty-two milliseconds then for a round trip time. No, no. You're right, right. 152 milliseconds for round trip. Time. Round trip, time, yeah. And that too, see, the connection is established. So first it will take 150. From next it on next on it will take 152, right? Yeah. Okay. So unnecessary complicating the question doesn't make sense, right? Because we need to understand what is uh, happening here rather than going into you know details. Detail. Correct. No, no. I just wanted to understand the importance right, right, right. of that statement. Absolutely That's fine. No issues. So I hope you got the idea why we are yes. you know, putting something and putting not putting something. So that's why it is taking. Can we say that in the end the atomicity is uh, broken for the last in the end, the, Yes, yes, yeah. But this is not a database, so yeah. If if the properties are uh, apply to everything, then yes. This is not a transaction, right? So, but yeah, in general, it is uh, not holding true. Atomicity is. Professor, can you proceed to question number three? Yeah, if there are no doubts, I will. Yes, yes. Okay, so the question number three is one of the question from quizzes. Let's try to read this. This is more of a practical question, which encompasses everything that we have said. All right, so consider a client which is located 6,000 kilometers from the server makes a request through cable. Fine. Suddenly, after the request reaches the server, the cable breaks and the response is now to be sent to the client via air. Okay, this change of medium caused an additional delay of 75 milliseconds at the server end. How long will the client have to wait before receiving the response? Is the question clear? Yes, sir. Okay, so if the question is clear, you can get the answer directly, right? So, two circles, this is. Uh, the procedure we have to make two circles okay so one is uh, the one is the client and the other is server all right how are they uh, how long uh, is the distance between them that is 6000 kilometers so they are separated by 6000 kilometers and where connected by cable okay so they are connected by cable and a request is being made to this server all right Suddenly, when as and when the uh, the request reaches the server, the cable breaks. So, if the cable breaks, there is no actual physical connection between the two uh, bodies, but they are connected now by air. So, the request can be sent back. Uh, sorry, the response can be sent back to the server via air. 
But the problem is if I want, okay, if there was a configuration of one medium before and suddenly a medium changes, the configuration has to be changed. So all those things, whatever happened in the background is encapsulated in this 75 milliseconds. Okay, so server will have to make change. Okay, now, now that there is no cable connection, I'll have to make the configuration to go through air and that uh, change and uh, understanding took 75 milliseconds delay. Okay, so finally, how long will the uh, uh, will the client wait before receiving the response? 125 milliseconds. 25 milliseconds. Right, right, right. So I, I, I have not solved it. Let's see. It's one of the quizzes questions. So see, if you can solve, if you understand first two questions, no other question is difficult. Right. So basically, what um, I want to find is round trip time or basically latency. I want to find latency. Okay, so the latency is what RTP plus all the delays. Okay, that's what I'll see. Now, what is RTP here? Is is this conventional multiplying by two? No. No, right? Why? Because the medium is changing. Change. So it will be uh, first the request which I'll write with small r. Time taken by request, which I'll write with small r, and then I'll write the time taken by response, which I'll write with capital R or capital T. Okay. Small t, time for the request, and capital T, time for the response, and then delays. Right. Now these two time are would have been same if the medium was same. It would have been same if the medium was same, but the medium is different. Initially, it is cable and then it is uh, air, right? So what I'll do first, I'll find the time for the request to reach from client to server independently, and then from server to client independently. Okay. So how do we do that? This is uh, first, right? So first, time response. So what I'll do is six thousand in two thousand in two thousand divided by two. Two. 2 10 power 8 2 into 10 to the power 8 okay this is pr then i'll add this to capital pr which is same thing same thing only that the medium that was cable before has now changed to air okay i'm copying this but i hope you understood this right and i'll only replace this 2 with 3 3 Okay, and then later on, I'll add 75, 75. Hmm. Okay, but the problem is this 75 milliseconds, right? And the answer that I will be getting with these equations will be in seconds. So I'll have to also take care of units. So that's why I'll add it in seconds. Okay, so if you add 75 with very small values coming in milliseconds, you'll definitely get wrong answer, right? So I have to take care of millis, uh, uh, what we call units every hmm. time. Okay, so what do you get in the first part? What is the answer in the first time? 0 0.03. So that is 30 milliseconds, right? Next. Yes. Next is. Uh... Is it 20? Yes. Because by the look of equation. Uh, 0 0.02. It's 0 0.02. 20. 0 0.03, 0 0.02, and finally 0 0.075. Yes. What does it uh, total to? 0 0.125. 0 0.125, which is 125 milliseconds. So everything that you are getting here is in seconds. Just multiply any second value to millisecond, just multiply it by 1000. Okay, so it will be 125 milliseconds. Basically, this is uh, these are the questions that you might expect, or similar to these you might expect in uh, quiz. Right? We are not done yet, but uh, this is more of RTT latency. Any any issue in these type of questions now? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, so I'll be providing these five uh, set of slides to you after the session. Don't worry. So there is a section called as uh, solve with instructor source code. Okay. This is one of a solve with instructor session because you're doing it along with me, right? So 
this and every code and everything that we are be that will be doing in every saturday session i'll uh, provide it next day or in two, one or two days after the session okay and it will be updated in your portal all right so how much will the client wait it will wait for 125 milliseconds all right any any doubt in this three questions no sir no sir okay fine so we'll move to the next question next one more word that you may have heard of bandwidth right so there are questions on this also and uh, very pertinent question because bandwidth is something we are talking about network and we don't talk about bandwidth may not happen right so what is bandwidth bandwidth is the measure of how good the network connection is okay it is a measure of how good the network connection is it has nothing to do with client it has nothing to do with server it is the connection in between okay so that is what is bandwidth and what is bandwidth so generally we will uh, uh, talk about bandwidth in two terms so it is related to two things one is what is the size of one request and how many requests are being made per second okay and bandwidth is nothing but the product of two. okay so it is actually size of each request if it is an hand rest just wait a minute i'll come to you size of each request into number of requests per second now this per second is very important yeah go ahead who raised the hand kaushik sorry that was my mistake oh okay so this is what is bandwidth All right. Now, if you see this formula, this question is now just a matter of multiplication, right? So, what is bandwidth basically? It is allowable speed and allowable size, and that speed depends on what is the size of request. Okay. So, let's say if I want, uh, if I make a request, I am sending some information, right? I am receiving some information from the server, and that information will definitely have some size on it, right? So. how frequently that thing can come to me per second is what is the what is and the measure of that is what is called as bandwidth all right that is why these two things are very important now if i talk about units uh the size of any uh, anything sorry any document or information that we are talking about can be in it can be in bytes it can be in kilobytes it can be in megabytes it can be in giga bytes all right so this is the information and the other thing is number of requests per second so this is numbers per second basically you will see that bandwidth the unit of bandwidth is bytes per second kilobytes per second megabytes per second gigabytes per second right and that is the re that is this is where the mbps kbps gbps comes from all right okay and with this i'll remove this and write ps so that it looks more familiar to you all right but there is one more thing generally you will see that in your probably in your wifi or whatever uh, mobile we are using we'll see that we have speed like this and not like this okay so what is what does this mean and what does this mean so generally the bandwidth is the uh, and uh, uh, written by difference right perfect by so generally by. the bandwidth yeah that's what right correct bandwidth is represented in bits per second and not bytes per second so whenever you see small b it refers to bits Okay, and capital B refers to bytes. Okay, was there a hand raised? You can unmute and ask. No, sir. Sir, I have one doubt. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Ask. In in practice, assignment and grid assignment, uh, 
there is something about ip we for and six addresses like mm -hmm. uh, bits and those things are those discussed in videos uh videos meaning uh the content uh not yes. really because uh, uh see i mean ipv4 ipv6 addresses are just for the information right we won't generally use them so a basic information on them can be given measures yeah they not discussed in videos but uh, they are asking graded assignments so that's what i'm thinking will be there yeah. asking quizzes yeah but if they are asking quizzes information on them is given uh, will be given okay so in one of my sessions probably in the next session because uh, uh, no no not really next session we can uh, take this in today's session also if the time permits some explanation on ipv4 address and ipv6 address can definitely be given uh what i'm asking is if something is not taught in videos then we can't expect those questions in quizzes yeah so if something is not taught in videos it will be taught in screen cast it will be taught in live sessions or uh, uh, sessions like this if that session uh, i mean that part or that piece of content has taken certain space in your live sessions then there is a probability that you might expect questions on that okay uh generally we avoid that if uh, if a concept is there in the lecture videos or screen cast then and then only we go ahead and ask but yeah there is see ipv4 and ip they are one liners right so if you have a basic idea you can go ahead and solve so that's what so uh generally what i do is i mix up ipv4 and ipv6 uh, understanding of those in week 2 because there we have information uh, efficiency Uh, uh information interpretation number systems so all those things are there that's why i take ipv4 with uh, week to content okay okay so in one of our activity or practice session or open session we'll talk about ipv4 because see uh generally in ipv4 you will see something like this right 192.168.89.45 so this is a valid ipv4 address but what this 192 is one what this 168 is is something that is that is that has its roots in number systems so when we are once we are clear with number system i'll uh, give you an explanation of what these addresses mean okay these are octets right sorry octets half text octets eight decimal eight bits octets yes that is something that has been discussed on discourse also right yeah so these are called as octets so i'll go into details of this don't worry sir what questions can we expect uh, in quizzes what questions you can go i mean you can go ahead and have a look at previous quiz questions so these questions right so question number 3 is one of the quiz questions right this is on network latency uh then there will be questions on html and css definitely so you just have a look at uh, the previous quiz questions you will have get an idea okay uh, during week 4 somewhere near week 4 we'll also release uh, mock so going through mock also you will get an idea we'll discuss the mock also in detail so you will be at least uh, 60% or 80% ready uh, with the idea of what kind of questions are expected okay rest 40% is your what you put in Okay, makes sense. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, sir. Um, is there any official uh, resource for this uh, paper? Oh, you don't have that. Uh, even I don't have that for now. I'll I'll share it on Discord. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, there is a actually site uh, where all the papers are. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so all year. the papers are uh, papers published, year. right? So we will share that uh, link with you. Uh, I'll share it on Discord, and it will be available. I'll share on my. So you'll have uh, the you can have a look of all the previous terms, quiz one papers, and everything. Okay, so with that, I'll move ahead with this question. Hello, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, there is one uh, KB that is thousand bytes. Also, that is there is also one thousand two four byte. One thousand two four byte. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So that is one confusion that we have, but. Uh, i mean students are but what we do is we use this relation sorry so see if the if we are mentioning that use this you have to use this yeah i just want to know like uh, what is one means why these are different 1024 and 
thousand. See, basically, what happens is uh, people's interpretation of bytes and bits vary with uh, uh, vary with binary digits, right? So, for example, when I say uh, thousand, I can refer to it with kilo, right? Kilo bytes. That we are providing scientific notation, right? Yeah, but actually, what is one zero two four? It is two raised to the power ten. Two to the power ten. Yeah. One zero two four is two raised to the power ten. So what we actually mean is one zero two four is all the combination of bits, two bits, or the binary digits that are possible. Okay, so this is what we mean. So it is like this: ten bits. Okay, combinations of zeros and ones. So every bit taking, uh, sorry, every information taking uh, ones, uh, sorry, every information taking ten bits long memory, and such one. If if you go ahead and count, you will have one zero two four combinations. All right. So this is something what a kilobyte should mean. But the thing is, when we actually store data, there is some information that is stored to act, that is used to actually store the uh, interpretation of information. For example, in practical sense, we go and take a 64 GB memory card. Do we really get 64 GB completely? No, it no. Will be less so than that. We get very less. No. Why? Because some of the information is used to store the software and how to uh, store data, interpret data, okay. what will be the interpretation of data, right? So, in context of the data. So, all these things are there. So, you can assume that out of 1024, if for every 1024 bits or bytes, 24 bits are taken for that information. So useful bits are only 1000. Right? So this is a practical explanation of that. But for and this, the second very easy explanation to that would be ease of calculation. <coughs> multiplying 8 by 1024 is far, is definitely harder than multiplying 8 by 1000. You're getting. So I've given you both the explanation. Whichever you find uh, meaningful, you can take that. But ultimately, you'll use this relation. Right? Even if this statement is not given, we use this relation. Okay, okay. Right? And by chance, you use 1024. Instead of, let's say my answer was 6 GB per second. Instead of that, you will get 6 point something GB per second, which is intuitive enough to mark the right answer. Right? Mm -hmm. What I'm meant to say is, let's say, with the calculation of 1000 bytes, the actual answer was, let's say, uh, to 5 GB per second. That was with the final answer. But by mistake you use 1024 as your calculation for your calculation so you'll get five point something right so that is sufficient enough to give you an idea that okay from the option five looks most closest so that is the answer but we don't want to keep you in that confusion and that's why we straight away uh, you know specify that use this okay 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 sir but sir uh, <laughs> means uh, where i i just read somewhere like a thousand bytes uh, thousand twenty four byte is in uh, binary form and if you're using binary things like if you're using in like computers or like things that will be taken as 1024 but mm -hmm. if you're using as a I means calculation purpose and yeah, normal thing, you can yeah. Set i explained right. to so him that's what i said right given Torex number also to him so that he can set the live location but a Torex a bath with the okay you just have to go there show him the medicines i told him you got to extra raiga or he can sell kar dena. Uh, uh, probably it was Vasu speaking, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, so, Devashish, you got the idea, right? So, I gave you two. One practical reason and one ease of calculation reason. Whatever it is, you take 1000, okay? Okay, okay, okay. Got it. Yeah. Mm, okay. So, let's calculate this. Probably some of you may have already, but uh, for the, uh, so that it becomes a, a note for us, we'll calculate. Alright. So, we'll use, it is 8 GB. Okay, so the bandwidth is 8 GBPS and we have to find out the size of each request. So I'll put 8 GBPS here. Note that it is small b. So it is gigabits per second and not bytes per second. Okay, so it is 8 gigabits per second and I want to find out uh, size of each request. So I'll put it as not x, let's say s because we have multiplication sign as x. Right? So size into the uh, number. So we have 5,000 such requests. Okay. 
So let me just uh, simplify this eight gigabits per second. Okay, and this is five thousand such requests sent per second, right? This is five thousand per second. So you can say that this per second gets evenly cancelled by this per second, right? So you will have this eight gigabits s into five thousand. Okay, five thousand is just a number, right? So s, what will be the unit of s? It will be in some gigabits, megabits, bits, whatever it is. It will be some in bits or bytes. Okay, that is what we'll find out. So if this per second is gone, what I'll do is eight gigabits, right? So eight is eight. What is giga? It is ten raised to power nine. Nine. Okay, ten raised to power nine. So this is bits. Now this is bits. Okay, per second got cancelled, hmm. and this is s, and this is five thousand. All right. So what do I get? S equals to. It will be eight into ten raised to power nine. Eight. Can I take uh, three zeros for eight here also? I'll take four zeros. One, two, three, four. Into ten six. to power five, six five, eight. and then five thousand. Sir, it will be eight into ten to the power ten bits, no? Nine. It's gigabits, right? Nine, nine. It will be nine. I'll give you the table also so that you there is no confusion later. Okay. So if I divide eighty thousand by five thousand, how many? How much do I get? I get sixteen. Uh, sixteen lakh. Divide, right? We are not multiplying. Yeah, divide. Yeah. I am told. Trying the to trying to say the total. Okay, okay, total. Yes. One point six. One point six GPB. So. 16 lakhs, right? 16 into 10 raised to power 5. This is what we get. So what is this? This is bits. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I can convert this in whatever form I want. Okay. So if this is bits, let me convert it into megabyte or megabits because I have uh, very. This number is very closer to mega, right? So what I can say, if I divide this by 6, 10 raised to power 6. It will be mega, so I can just write like this. It will be one point six into ten yeah, raised to power six. six. Right, same thing I've written. Is this fine? And this ten raised to power six refers to mega, just as ten raised to power nine refers to giga. Ten raised to power six refers to mega. So it is one point six megabits. Mega bit. Okay. And let us multi, uh, make it as byte because generally, what what is the, what is the file size? It is in kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte. So generally, we present represent the size of a file or document or information in byte, not bits. So what do I have to do? I'll have to divide it by eight. eight. So one point six divided by eight. How much? Point two. Point two. Point two. Point two MB. Point okay. Two so it will be point two MB. So what is point two MB? This is the size of each request. Two hundred kilobytes. Two hundred kilobytes. Sir, why two hundred? Because this is point two MB. Okay, okay. Let's go step by step. So, okay. this, what do I get? I get zero uh, point. Yes. Sorry, zero point two mega bytes. Bytes because we have divided by eight, right? Eight. So note this: when I have divided by eight, the small b has turned into capital B. Can you show that step also by writing? Okay, divided by eight, and what I'll do, I'll write here: one by eight, eight bits. Eight bits. So not L, it is one. So I'm using this thing. First, this thing. First, I use this thing to get the conversions, and this thing to make the next conversion. So this is 0.2 megabyte. All right. Now what is 0.2 megabyte or what is one megabyte equals to? How many kilobytes? 10 to the power three. Three. So I'll multiply it by 10 to the power three. So I can write it like this. 200 kilobytes. So it will be 0.2 into thousand. Sorry, thousand kilobyte. 
and finally i can write 200 okay so basically if i send 200 kilobyte information and 5000 uh, such information such piece of information uh, 5000 per second if i want to send i need to have a bandwidth of 8 gbps so that is what this question is so basically what we we are saying that let's say there are five people joining uh, single wi-fi everyone will get let's say one uh, mbps speed so what is the actual bandwidth okay let me repeat five people joining one wi-fi everyone is getting one megabit information one megabit per second bandwidth so what is the actual bandwidth of uh, wi-fi mm, five, 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 five mbps right so that is what is happening here on the on the broader sense so i want to take 200 uh, kilobyte piece of uh, one information that is worth 200 kilobyte and i want to send or receive or actually transact 5000 such requests in one second so what should be the bandwidth it should be 8 gigabits per second so that is what the question is it is other way around right so we are taking out the size of request by bandwidth rather than taking out the bandwidth okay so with this what i'll do is i'll also write the conversions Sir, if it was a uh, uh, different one that we have to find out the bandwidth and size of each request is given, then we have to multiply that, right? Mm, yeah. So basically, you'll be using this formula, right? Now you divide the one factor with other, multiply the formula should hold, and you will get one missing, two given, right? Mm. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just add one more uh, slide here. Where are we? Here just add one slide here and i'll write try to write the uh, what we call the convergence so okay so the first conversion is uh, with the bits right so one byte equals 8 bits okay then we'll go into uh, the series okay so how how much is one kilobyte one kilobyte is thousand byte. okay how much is one megabyte one megabyte is thousand kilobyte thousand kb and it is also 10 uh, raised to power six bits. Six bytes, not bits. Ah, oh, bytes. Sorry. Okay. Then, then I come to one gigabyte. Gigabyte. Okay. It is thousand MB. MB or MB. 10 raised to power MB. six Nine. bytes. Nine. 10 raised to power six kilobyte. Okay. We'll see, I mean, we'll write everything, right? So the conversion from every step to every step should be possible. That is 10 raised to power. Nine bytes. So you can put brackets. Yeah, you can put equal to. Equal to. After that. Yes. What is next? In terabyte. Tera terabytes. Uh, so terabyte will be thousand. GB. Okay, and then it will be ten raised to power six. Let's copy. Okay. Ten raised to power six megabyte. Okay. Uh, ten raised to power nine kilobytes. And ten raised to power twelve. And raise to power level. Okay. So I hope this is okay for the conversion. Yes. And rest you can go negatively, right? So for example, if I want to uh, convert one gigabyte, or oh, sorry, one megabyte into gigabyte, so it is ten raised to power minus three gigabyte. Okay. One megabyte is ten raised to power minus three, minus three gigabyte. gigabyte. Okay. okay. So similarly, you can go to do that also. All right, but basically you will need this. So this is bit and byte conversions. Uh, similar, one more conversion will see number system that is converting from one number system to another. Seconds to. Seconds to. That also you want? Okay, fine. 
but the the thing it, it it happens same similar it works right so if i if i want to write one second yes. hmm. uh, one second okay so this second thing will give you the negative thing right negative powers one second is 10 to the power minus 3 minus 3 oh, how minus 3 it is 10 okay. to the 3 millisecond millisecond okay one millisecond is 10 to the power 10 to the power minus 3 3 second to the power minus uh, is minus minus 3 second seconds so one what is next micro second one microsecond is it is 10 raised to power minus 3 minus. millisecond and 10 raised to power minus 6 second. second second it is 10 raised to raised to power minus 3 millisecond equals to 10 to the power minus 6, six. second okay. and then one thing that is nano Nine. 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 It is minus three, minus six, minus nine. Hmm. Okay, so I'll just copy this from here. Okay, so this uh, ten to the power minus three micro, ten to the power minus six. Really? And raise to power. So can you mute? Okay, I am on mute. I, I, how will I? Okay, that's not from my side, by the oh, way. From background. Uh, okay, that is mute. So it is raise to power minus nine uh, seconds. Okay, then there is pico second. We don't need that. Then raise to power minus twelve. We never need that because we are not uh, at that point at this point. That okay, is so very precise, right? Sorry? Picosecond is very precise, I mean. In terms yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, nanosecond is fine. That is fine, more than fine. Okay, okay. so we'll never see conversions to that. Yeah, it can be fictitious conversions. But ultimately, if we want to really want, if we really want you to calculate something, we can give as small as that. But uh, practically, you won't see this. Okay, so this is what you will ever require for yes. convergence. Okay, so with that, we'll move to the, the last question of today's session. Okay, so this is again uh, a question that you may have seen uh, in previous uh, videos, uh, I mean, the live session, uh, uh, what you call channel, if you have actually gone through. But uh, if you have not, don't worry, we'll go through one by one. And um, I mean, I would uh, recommend you to uh, follow the current playlist only because see this is what we have done uh, one on one right so your doubts are there what i wanted to show is there if something is not clear then you can refer to the previous live sessions just don't uh, necessarily... live sessions, right? yeah. yeah okay so this is the last question uh, let's try to read the question okay just give me a minute <clears throat> So this is uh, this is about concurrent uh, working. <clears throat> so what is happening here? A certain video on the web occupies two megabytes of the memory on server, right? So let's say if I if I want a server to provide me a video, for example, what YouTube does, right? There are videos stored in YouTube server. We just go ahead and uh, 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 render them, right? So just watch them. So what is happening? The stored version of the video on the server is coming to the RAM of the server and getting streamed to us. Okay. Does that mean if there is another person who is trying to watch the same video will start from wherever I have, I have been watching? No, it will start from the very beginning for that another person, right? Okay. Let me, uh, let me go into detail on what I'm saying. So do we have shapes? No. Okay, anyway, so let's say there is, this is the YouTube server. Okay, and in the YouTube server, there is a video. Okay, so there is some video here. Let me just write that. So it is video one. So this is the video that I want to watch. 
okay and then there are there is a uh, there is a client here okay so when i want to watch this video i'll go to the video uh, youtube or whatever it is youtube server and fetch for video one and then this video comes to the ram and starts playing starts playing meaning it is starting to stream on this uh, uh, on this on this network and i'll be able to see that okay so let me also create a ram for this okay this is the ram okay so what happens a version of this or what we call as instance of this video come here okay so this instance of this video comes here and it starts streaming okay the video will remain once right it will be saved in the server or the database of youtube it will be saved only once but on the ram it will come once okay and let's say after 5 seconds after 5 seconds another client pops up okay another client pops up and searches or browses for the same video so it will go to the server the youtube will fetch it from the database and what it will do is it will create another instance of the video and play it on the ram why will it do that because after 5 seconds this client would not want to see the would not want to miss the first 5 seconds of the video right this client would want to see the video from the very beginning that is the reason the youtube will bring another instance of that video on ram and starts streaming right and that was that that is what is happening right we watch on the youtube two people watching same for example this session once it is done streaming on the youtube you can any time come come back and watch it on the youtube wherever from wherever you want does that happen that if you are Uh, uh you know if you are starting from 30 minutes the same video if another person comes it will also start from 30 minutes for that person also no it will also it will start from the beginning so this is what is happening and therefore we call it as concurrent viewership okay so sorry so these two clients are concurrently viewing this video with their own timeline right so how many videos to come or how many instances of the video will come on the ram will depend on how many concurrent viewers are there for that the ram should be big enough to support those many clients right so if there are two now what if there are 100 100 instances of that video will come on the ram and will start streaming and the actual um, uh, saved video will remain one right it will not unnecessarily have redundant data right keeping copying and uh, streaming it making the copy and streaming it it will happen on ram why because as soon as this client goes this instance of the video goes right and you cannot delete data from the database you would not want to do that so you would want want data, uh, the data to be deleted from the ram and that is what ram does right ram gets refreshed so the changes adding of video deletion of a video is actually happening on ram therefore this question appears right what should be the minimum ram requirement of the server so that it the process that it can process requests from all the viewers simultaneously right that is the reason and that is the reason we are saying that there are 2 megabytes of memory on the server so this ref this 2 megabyte refers to the the one and only copy of that video on the youtube database okay and the number of servers or sorry the number of viewers increasing here will actually increase the number of instances on the ram right so for example if there was only one client and the video was 2 megabyte how much of ram was used 2 megabyte okay with the database remaining same constant at 2 megabyte now if the if i increase the client what will happen the video one more instance of that video will increase so how much actual data is being used on the ram 2 plus 2 right if i create one more client right one more instance of the video has to be added right so basically it will be if one client one into size of video right so i'll just keep on writing here okay so if it is one client one client or viewer this one client or viewer 
the ram used will be 1 into size of video if this happens with the second client what will happen two clients go into size of video similarly if i go ahead and keep doing this i'll have n clients will be requiring how much of the ram n into size of video so this is clear but how does practically the server manage this kind of uh, load this is practically this is how it manages so what do we think 10, 10 is the TB. size of youtube so this will be say 10 uh, tb of uh, yeah that's that's like the ram sizes okay so the server size so we're talking about RAM. yeah okay so database size is fixed because that is not getting affected Right? So in, ca uh, in case of 5 million, you have, say, 10 times that size. So we will have to keep increasing the server RAM to that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happens. But uh, that will be very expensive, I mean, for uh, practically to have web servers with that kind of uh, RAM. Will it not be very it's, it's, expensive? It's very common for, for servers to have this kind of RAM. No, no, the, the, see, the thing is, this is the most basic thing that we're looking at. I mean, okay. how, like, practically how it should happen. But the thing is, what um, uh, I mean, the, what happens is YouTube does not store video in that now. It stores in, into, into segments. You might have, you may have seen that a video initially appearing blur, suddenly your network connection increases and it by itself turns into a very clear one. Yes, sir. Right. So what happens is, uh, it's not the same video. It's just the fragment of that video getting updated. So what? So technically what is happening here is, it is somewhere using, for example, if these two clients are similar in, in their viewer, right? If the, this is also somewhere 30 minutes, this is also somewhere 30 minutes, then it will take merge that instant and somewhere uh, have that uh, optimization of RAM. So there are multiple things happening, which I myself am not aware of. And probably, as you are saying that this is definitely not the most practical way, but uh, as far as this question is concerned, this is the only way. Okay. Okay. Now, so we are five, talking about five million, five million views, concurrent views is actually a very big number. It's like a, I was just looking at the IPL viewership, hmm. right? So this is like an important IPL match. Right? No, so, IPL so, is, so it's a right. big number. So the cost will be high, expectedly. And no, but that is different. See, why is that different? Because I, IPL match is happening live, right? So if there are 5 million viewers or 10 million viewers, a person, if I miss first half hour, I won't be able to see the first half hour. It is live. Okay, so there will be but, only one instance. There will okay. be no the different instance created for every viewer. Yeah, okay. No, there so I think the issue answer. is, uh, sorry, I got it, sir. The, there, mm -hmm. There's actually a case study, nice case study, how Hotstar has managed the optimization. Mm -hmm. Because there, this issue is streaming to so right. many people. Like, right. Sorry, I confused it. I'm sorry. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, so th that is a different scenario. And there's a different scenario. And this is more uh, what we call uh, practically hazardous. That one is OK. But right. sir, in live also, we can move back in some live television. Can you? I'm not sure if you can. Yeah, we can move back. I have seen many like in like, YouTube maybe in YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, in YouTube. So that's what. So if it is, you see, if it is efficient enough to give you a different instance for yourself, why not move back? Why not allow moving back? But in the live streaming, uh, moving back, then that is a different instance, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what. That's what. So you, you may have uh, seen it in YouTube because YouTube anyway supports uh, different instance for a different user, right? But uh, the 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 OTT platforms which are showing live matches, they don't do that. Okay. Okay. Because YouTube anyway is supporting that thing. So uh, because see, we have YouTube live and things like that. So if it is anyway supporting, then why not uh, 
it is supporting a more complicated problem such as this so why not a person first watching live then moving back and then again moving to live it will definitely support that okay so the basic idea is to get uh, the understanding of this question practical we can have a lot of discussion okay uh, maybe i have to just uh, look at what uh, uh, i mean uh, most recent what they are doing to optimize this kind of issue but uh, in the most basic sense if we see this is what must be happening in shape right so if we see ahead if i replace this n with 5 milli million i'll have the actual ram size here right i'll just move it a bit uh, in the database here for now okay so if i go ahead and do it for a 5 million size i hope i mean i'm sure you may have got the answer by now okay but this is what is the concept behind this question the use of ram when there are concurrent viewers okay and each one is having their own instance so 5 million is basically 5 into 10 raised to power 6 I went to 10 raised to power 6, and uh, what is the size of uh, the video? It is 2 megabytes. So it is basically 2 into again 10 raised to power 6. Okay, because mega is into 10 raised to power 6. That's what we saw, right? So finally, what does it come to? It is coming to 10 into 10 raised to power 12. Okay, ten into ten raised to power twelve. And if you see, this size of the video is actually getting multiplied by a constant number. So, what will be the final unit size, right? Whatever it is, if the size of video is in megabytes, I'll get the final unit in megabytes only. So, it is ten into ten raised to power twelve megabyte, which will actually come out to be ten terabyte. That's what I want. right so you need to also uh, check i mean how does a particular unit is coming right so what should be the unit of this that's what and generally it makes sense because a ram has a unit of size only it, it is either in gb or mb or tb right tb is not for us but definitely possible right so this is what this question is about any any issue here yes yes clear right so so these are the various questions that can be framed or concepts that on which the questions can be framed as far as week one is concerned right and for the quiz one you have first four you, you will have first four weeks right so you can definitely expect questions from this section okay so any doubt in the the five questions that we have taken no sir okay i'll share this Yes, uh, I'll share these uh, set of slides, five six slides we are having. I'll share this on the course. Okay. Now we will take some general doubts for some time. Yeah, Devashish. Sir, can we leave? Yeah, there are no questions. You can drop off. It's already one, right? You might have other session drops. Yes. Sir, Thank how you. to convert from IPv4 to IPv6? IPv4 to see that is the problem. Every IPv6 can be converted to IPv4, but every IPv4 may not be converted to IPv6. See, for example, IPv4. Why why was there a need of IP? I just stopped presenting. Why was there a need of IPv6? Because IPv4 could not accumulate all the possible IP addresses, right? So you might have an IP address in IPv6 that was not possible in IPv4, right? Therefore, you cannot convert every number in IPv6 to IPv4, but conversely, you can do IPv4 to IPv6. You can. Do. We can convert any IPv6 to IPv4, na? No, no, no. You can convert any IPv4 to IPv6. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. That is the thing I am asking. How to convert an IPv4 to an IPv6? Okay, so that we'll see in the next session when I'll show you what number systems are and what conversions are. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the thing is that uh, in activity section they are asking in week one. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. Activity questions you can do any time. No? Okay. See, the thing is, IPv4 has uh, conversions in decimal, so it is a decimal. Uh, it is a group of decimal number called as octets, right? But IPv6 is hexadecimal. So unless you know the conversion of decimal to hexadecimal, 
uh, it becomes tough to make explain you right and i want everybody to be on the same page some of them do not know what number systems and conversions are so we'll go uh, in the that uh, format right will that work devish uh, yes sir yes sir that will work definitely right so in the next session uh, witness this session we will uh, try to see this yeah yeah okay sir Let me also go ahead. Sir, uh, what about that web server? That web server, what means uh, you have said in the beginning of the uh, meeting that you will show the web server in Windows, I guess. Ah, that will go ahead. No, I mean, I'll show meaning in the upcoming sessions. I'll show. Okay, 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 okay. Vasu, can you share the case? Okay, so case study regarding the optimization of hotstar yeah vasu you can share it on discourse i i don't have it but i i remember reading somewhere or okay, i'll okay. try and pull it out i i don't know where i read it i could have read that's it okay that's okay take your time uh, sir you can, yeah, uh, put can it find on, it I'll, I'll share it unless it's a subscription version uh, okay okay it. sure 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 so you can uh, if you find it you can share it on discourse so that yeah, it's yeah, available like, not only to the people who have joined the session but everyone sure sure Okay. Uh, I don't expect. Okay. Okay. Optimization. Nicely. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Fine. So with that, Thank I'll uh, stop this session. If there are no more doubts, and we can. Yeah, there will be doubts, but we'll try to create. Uh, I mean, clear them session by session. All right. And uh, by the end of three, four sessions, you will be quite comfortable with me and the content and everything. Yes. Okay, fine. So if you have any other session, you can drop off and join that. Thanks for joining. We'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.